So welcome to Wrestle Designs guys and to another how-to video. In today's video, we're we'll showing you how to remove a gear box on your Golf Mark III. I'm going to be showing you tricks and tips and some of my hacks to getting this job done. So it's worth watching it all the way through because there's going to be like little gems as I go through the video and as I'll show you guys how to remove this gearbox. Now the gearbox in question is an O2O. 2 It's a rod change gearbox and it comes on the later 1.6s, 1.8, and the two liter GTI. And it also comes in the early TDs and just the Ds. And not to be confused with the O2A gearbox, which is a cable change gearbox, which comes on the VR6, the TDIs, 90 and 110, as well as on the 16 valve ABF Golf Mark III. So this is the vehicle that I'm gonna be taking the gearbox out of. It's a 1.6 GT, it's a 97, so it's almost the end of line car. And the gearbox is a bit noisy in second gear, so that's why I'm gonna be replacing this. I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step on how to remove it. So let's get into it, guys. So the first thing to remove will be the battery. And then now we'll be removing the earth strap and the power lead that goes to the starter motor. So now there's three plugs to remove, which is the signal for the starter motor, the reverse light switch, and also the speedo. And now we're going to focus on the starter motor. You've got this little black plastic bit here that holds the wiring. There's a first tin underneath, so we're going to remove that. And then next, as we're in the area of the starter motor, there's this little 10 mil bolt that holds uh, the bracket onto the water coolant pipe. We need to remove that. And then the next bit to do is going to be the 16 mil that goes through the engine mount bracket. All right, so we're almost finished step one. The next thing to do now is to actually put the clutch cable into service mode. Now, if you're wondering what this white little thing is, that's actually the thing you need to do to put it into service mode. If you don't have this, then you are kind of a bit buggered. You can kind of get it in, but it is a bit difficult now. You need two hands for this. I'm gonna try and put you down on a tripod, but I'm gonna to explain to you before I do that, how you do this. So the lever, what you do is, is you push it downwards. Cause this, as you press the clutch, it operates upwards. So now in pressing it downwards, this will actually shrink and coil. So with one hand, you gotta push it down. The other hand, you gotta try and clip these little shapes into into here like so onto those little bits there you go took a few seconds basically like i said I just ended up pushing this down and in doing so i was able to clip these into place and now what that does is the cable is now is actually loose as i lift it up it's loose and you're able to take off the little rubber and circlip that kind of holds it in place the cable there you go just dropped 
and as you can see cables off and now you're able to pull it from here as well take the rubber off with it as well and there you have it so that's the clutch cable released and this is the bit that actually comes off the cable what holds the cable in place as you can see the cable kind of slides in and sits in and also it's got like a sort of recess where it sits into the rubber to hold it into place as you can see with some of the cables I've actually cable tied them out of the way so it gives me space and moved everything out of the way so you've got as much space to maneuver and do what you need to do next thing to do is going to be this gear selector and linkage stuff so so the first thing to do will be to remove this weight it's got these two little clips I can pull this one off like that there's one there and there should be another one on the other end as well and here's the weight with the two clips on it always put them in place so you don't lose them next thing to do will be these little white clips here now that has a little clip so what you need to do is get yourself a small screwdriver to flick it open otherwise it won't come off or you'll break them so I've done that side and all you need to do then is just lift it up it can be a bit tight but it will it will just pop off and there you have it just removed it popped it off it was a bit difficult but it did pop off now there is another one to be done which is this one here which is the long one that goes to the main rod so that's the next one to be popped off so mission accomplished on that one so this is done now this is a bit gets a bit tricky now this you leave that kind of free this here what i tend to do is, is i tend to put it over and out of the way like that but before i do that actually there's a little 13 here i don't know if it's going to focus you don't remove it but you loosen it and in doing so this arm then becomes loose because it's got like a little slot and then you can actually move this out of the way because this is kind of it gets in the way and i'll show you what i mean once it's all kind of done so i'm hoping you guys can see that in there with all this stuff that it focuses you can see i've loosened off this nut and it's made this loose and now i can actually get it out of the way and put that on top of it as well and that's basically all the gear linkage then out of the way so now you can see the gear linkage is totally out of our way so next thing to do now as we're at the back of the gearbox will be to remove that bolt there from the rear mount so next now is going to be the two main bolts here at the top that hold the gearbox onto the bear housing there's one there and then there's another one right there sometimes these can be 18s or 19s it depends on what year or what factory they were built in these particular ones are actually 19s so let me just remove these and now don't forget that the front one or the nearest one to the radiator is this type the extra bolt on it and that's for the earth strap now that's the end of stage one stage two now is jacking it up taking the wheels off and starting off with the drive shafts and all the bits underneath now that it's up in the air I like to start off with the short drive shaft and you're going to need a triple square, a 60mm triple square or a 60mm spline, depends on wh what part of the world you're in or what you want to call it. I actually use a snap on one, which is a slightly longer one because there are shorter versions. What I like to do is use a really long extension and what I've done is I've just locked the disc in place with a screwdriver so that then when I go to turn this, I won't have an issue. And you can normally get three of them at a time. So just on the top one, next one round. And then that's the third one. Like I said, there's six in total. And as you can see, the draft shops actually come away the inside of the gearbox. Now you won't get it out like this. So I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. Some people can, act. I tend to not to remove these you need to remove like the 30 mil from there. I don't like to get involved in that. So what I'm going to do is you've got the three 13s that hold the bottom board joint in. So I'm going to remove those. Then you turn the steering wheel full lock this way around. And then you're able to actually pull it and you'll squeeze it. And I'll show you and you'll get it kind of around. So it sits in this kind of angle and out of your way. So these were the three bolts that I was referring to at the bottom of the board joint. Right, so like, like I said, now I'm going to turn the steering wheel full lock that way. And then I'm going to pull 
this side out, as you can see. And there you go, it's almost done it automatically. And it's now out of your way, the dry shaft. Now the longer dry shaft is a lot more awkward to do. There it is there. So the first thing I like to do is to remove this resonating mount or weight. So that's pretty straightforward to remove. And now you can see the bolts clearly. So that's the next six that we're gonna remove. So now on this side, again, I've removed that lower ball joint, three bolts. I'm gonna turn it full lock that way. And what you do need will be a block of wood to put in between the hub and ball joint and the wishbone so you can pull it away. And then I'll just slide it out. And then wedge the block into there and it's actually pulled the, now the dry shaft away so it won't get in my way with more bits that I need to remove and also with fitting it on and removing it. It's quite important to do this. All right, next, so there's two little heat shields that need to come off. This has got two 11 mils holding it on. And then there's another one at the top there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. It's kind of there, it's a 10 mil that holds it in place. But I'll show you once I've removed it. So this is the little dust cover that sits just above that drive shaft. So next now, this little bracket that holds the power steering pipe in place, just remove that. So now is the tricky bit, which is this little bracket, this kind of L shape here that sits on top of the rear gearbox mount. There's three 13s that hold it in place. Um, they're on this side of the diff. So you've got one, two, and another one at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the one at the bottom, the one in the middle, then get a jack, put it underneath the engine with a block and then remove the top one and then you can wiggle that. I've got the jack under the engine with a block and hopefully you can see it's moving now, it's free and there's one more bolt left at the top which I'll remove. So let me see if I can hold the camera steady with one hand to show you guys, so that's the bolt there. It's almost loose now. So that's what they look like, these long bolts, three of them. And now this bracket should be able to come off. Oops, a bit, it's a bit of a struggle with the ABS pump here. Okay. And that's that little T bracket, because with this in place, there's no way you're gonna get it out the gearbox. So now the last thing to come off is actually gonna be the starter motor. Uh, as you saw earlier on, we took off that little 10 mil that was there that holds the bracket onto this coolant pipe that goes around the block. So now you've got these long bolts here. There's two, one at the top, one at the bottom, and there should be another little one that goes on a bracket. A third one is very important. I'll show you that from, from underneath. So that's the top one off. Now we'll go to the bottom and I'll show you the other two. So these are the other two that I was referring to. Now you'd be surprised the amount of times I've seen this bolt not fitted. And what this bolt does, it bolts onto the actual bracket. Now with this not on, it will crack. You will crack this bracket that goes across. I've seen it happen so many times. It doesn't matter what gearbox you got in or what kind of power you're running, you will end up breaking this. All right, so let's remove those two and then we can take that bracket off. So now, take off the starter motor. And then the bracket, you will also need to move the bracket out of the way because otherwise you'll see when I'm trying to rotate this, you need as much clearance as you can in this area. Okay, so now I'm gonna try and show you guys <laughs> as best I can. Now I'm gonna try and show you guys as best I can. Now there's literally only one bolt holding the gearbox in and that's at the back. It comes from the engine side to the gearbox near where that drive shaft is, the long one. What we're gonna do is once that bolt's off, we then it won't drop straight away because there's actually should be two dowels holding the gearbox in place. What you'd have to do is you're gonna have to wiggle it 
as you'll see, to kind of get it away. Now, it won't come out because this rear flange will hit the actual bell housing on the, gear, on the engine. So what you need to do is you need to rotate it anti-clockwise to about two o'clock and have it kind of at an angle. What I'm gonna do is I won't be able to show you obviously top and bottom, I've only got one camera, but I'll leave the camera at the top here and hopefully you guys can see what's needed to take it off. Okay, that's the last bolt that's holding it in place right here by the drive shaft. I'm sure you guys can make it out where it is. All right, so as you can see, I've removed the bolt and it's started to kind of move away. I'll show you the top and you can see now there's a gap there. Found a better camera angle. Hopefully you guys can see what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna try and talk you what I'm gonna do now is first things first, we need to drop the engine slightly. Very slowly to give me more space to get it rotated around, not too much. Like so. And pull the engine as far forward towards the radiator as you can. And now I'm going to wiggle it. I take it off the dowels. And now I'm going to push the back of the gearbox up. Like so. And there you go. And now let's just drag it out. Alright guys, so once you've removed the gearbox, this is what you should be left with. And so you guys can kind of visualize on what's going to happen when I actually put this gearbox back in again. Is as you can see on the clutch, it is slightly tapered and the splines are very fine. And as you can see on the input shaft on the gearbox, again, same for the splines it has to be to match the clutch, but also it's tapered. So that when you're kind of in the general area, they will actually slide in. All you need to do is kind of wiggle it from side to side, maybe, or clockwise or anti-clockwise, and it will actually just slot straight in. But obviously you have to center this as well, which is something that needs to be done. And this is the bit, which is obviously the issue, is you have to kind of get this flange up and over. So if it wasn't clear, this is the, the main issue here, is this bit here. So you kind of have to kind of rotate it round, get it up over and then rotate it back to where it should be. All right, so now then the last and final stage is me actually showing you guys how this goes on from underneath. I'm gonna show you from the top again. I'm gonna see if I can mount the camera here, if possible, so you guys can get a better view. All right guys, so I've got the gearbox on. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show you guys, but I had to kind of rotate it, get it up at an angle, pushed it in and then wiggled it on and it stayed on. And the first bolt to go on was the rear one, which was the last one to take off. And a bit different to how obviously I removed it. The next three bolt, the next two bolts to put in are these main ones here that go onto the bell housing. And also for something very important is you should never draw these bolts in as in, you know, catch them and you're forcing them in to pull the gearbox towards the engine. That means that something wrong the spline hasn't gone in, there's something in the way, the heat, the, the backing plate behind it, or something's not right, and you could be damaging something. So it should go in smoothly, and there should be no real stress, obviously, as you're holding the box, but it shouldn't be kind of forcing it, forcing it towards it. That means you've done something wrong. All right, guys, so this is the end of the video. Hopefully, you've watched it to the end, and you've seen, you've seen all my tricks and tips. And if you want to see more how-to videos, there's a link here of loads of VW how-tos. Please subscribe, like, comment, and be safe.